Hey folks, this is Cindy. Thanks so much for stopping by. Today we are kicking off the monochromatic challenge for a blog named Hero. This has been a really fun challenge so far. The card I'm going to be sharing with you today is going to be using the Hero Arts color layering sea turtle stamp set. And I'm going to be showing how you how you can incorporate just a wee bit of Copic coloring in with these color layering stamp set. Give them a little bit more character, a little bit more pizzazz. Super duper fun, super duper easy. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to mask off this Nina Solar White cardstock. I have it cut down to four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. I did take my T ruler and I did lightly trace a, tr a frame with my pencil, just kept it super light. And I'm going to make sure that I have all of this masked off really well, although I'm going to be ink blending a fairly small section of this card. I am going to be splattering some Hero Art Shimmer Mist over the top of this and I don't want to get it all over the top of my entire panel. You could definitely ink blend this whole entire card panel if you wanted to. I have a plan for this frame and if you follow me at all you know that I love me a faux frame. So I'm just masking off a certain section of it. Plus the more you mask off the less you have to do. All right, so I'm gonna be using the Distressed Inks in Crushed Olive in Forest Moss. And I'm using these for a couple of reasons. Number one, they were on my desk. I already knew that they would match the sea turtle perfectly. Also, I want the, the reactive properties of them. You could use Hero Arts inks. I will have some alternatives listed down below as well as over on my blog if you're interested in those. It just won't react as well when you, or if you spray a shimmer mist on it, or if you spray spray any kind of water on it. I really wanted that reactive property to it. So there is that. All right, I'm going to get started on this ink blending here. I'm starting with the crushed olive. I'm just kind of going in with a light hand. I'm not terribly worried about any of these streaks because I am going to be going over the top of it. Plus that shimmer mist is going to help a bunch. I'm also making sure that I'm leaving an opening there in the middle where I'm not putting anything or not putting a whole lot. I'm trying to keep that pretty, pretty light because that sea turtle is going to be right there. Now that I'm coming in with that forest moss, I am making sure that that top left hand side Side is super duper light with that forest moss. I'm going to turn it around here in just a moment. You're going to see that it goes to the lower right hand side. That's where my turtle is going to be. So if I add too much forest moss there, you're not going to be able to see that turtle. We want it to be able to stand out. Although the whole entire card is monochromatic, you still need that guy to stand out there. After I was done with the forest moss, I'm coming back in with that crushed olive and I'm going in with a pretty heavy hand. Now it's still super light there in the center. That's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. But overall, I have a lot of ink built up on this. Now I do have the sped up so it could go a little bit faster, but I kind of took my time getting this ink on there. I really, really wanted that to build up and be as as bold as I could get it so it could stand out. It'll still complement that sea turtle. We're still going to see the sea turtle, but I really needed this ink blending to stand out as well. Okay, so before I pull off those masks, I'm going to make sure the entire panel is covered up and I'm going to bring in this Hero Arts White Iridescent Shimmer Mist. I love this stuff. I'm in love with it and I really love how it reacts to inks, especially distress inks. It's gorgeous. I'm just taking the top of that bottle off there and I'm just splattering it on there. I am going to bring in a cloth and I am going to kind of lift some of that up. I, it's going to react with that distress ink under there. It's going to lighten it in some some areas, but also it's going to sit kind of heavier in some other areas and you can really see that white iridescent shimmer. It's just really pretty. I didn't think the first round was enough, so I went in a second time and this time I just sprayed it. I went down halfway, kind of got some of those drops out of it and then finished pushing that pump down and got that nice light mist and it's just gorgeous. All right, so I did test my inks out here. I wanted to see if I can find the ones that would complement that crushed olive and forest moss really light nicely and I did so I'm going to start with the first layer on my turtle here I'm going to stamp this in the hero Arts soft olive ink I am going to double stamp this I need it to be pretty solid usually hero arts inks will kind of dry back nice and smooth and fill themselves in but because I was going to be doing Copic coloring over the top of it I wanted to make sure that I did have a solid image to begin with so I do double stamp these I just don't show that to you 
So I'm going to get this stamped on here the first time. Now you could absolutely just stamp all the layers on this turtle and just the dye ink and call it a day folks. But I really think that doing the Copic coloring with it really just kind of helps kick it up a notch and it's actually pretty easy. I am using Express Blending Card because I am going to be doing the Copic coloring with it. You can certainly new, use Nina Solar White cardstock. That would probably be just fine. But I'll tell you what, folks, Express a Blending Card blends out really lovely with Copic coloring. So I'm coming in with the YG97 and I'm going in where I feel my darkest shadow areas are going to be on this first layer. Now I kind of did a little bit of a test run with the YG95 and YG93. It wasn't quite dark enough so now I'm going to go back over it again. This is where I'm going to actually bring in that YG97 I'm just kind of doing the, the tips of his little flippers, kind of uh, playing up those uh, bends in his arms and his legs, going in there where his arms meet his body. Those would kind of be recessed a little bit because his shell would be sitting on top there. And then right around his head. Now we are going to be adding layers, stamped layers over the top of this. So it's not going to stand out super bright. It's not going to be crazy noticeable. But it is noticeable enough that it kind of gives it just a little bit of character. Now I stamped the sea turtle twice and on one of these I'll do the Copic coloring on the other one I'm not going to and you can see a little bit of the of a difference here. Now I also made sure that I tested out my Copics over the top of those ink swatches that I had done earlier to make sure that these were going to be a good match for them. It's, it's not fancy coloring by any means. I just wanted to make sure it just kind of kicked that ink up. Up just a notch so you could see a little bit of a difference again I'm just kind of make, trying to make my little sea turtles just look a little bit spiffier and this is a really easy way to do that with a color layering stamp set so I went in with the YG95, blended out that YG97. Now I blended it out with the YG93. I did make sure that a whole bunch of that soft olive ink is still shining through because it is a great color. There's no reason to color cover it all up. Now I'm going to come in with my second layer and I'm going to be using the Hero Arts Field Greens dye ink. I am going to double stamp this one as well. I need to make sure it's nice and solid. I have the number two marked here on my ink pad so I could keep them, keep them separate when I was swatching them out. You totally don't need to do that, but it sure kept my act in order. All right, so again, I'm going to be double stamping these and I'm going to do both of these turtles at the same time. This card is probably easy enough. You could totally mass produce it. I didn't worry about it, but you could definitely do that. Now I want to add some more shade and kind of add just a wee bit more dimension to this guy's shell. So I'm going to be bringing in the same colors because I have a little bit of a separation there between his body, that soft olive in his body. I can still use these same colors. It's still going to look a little bit different from the first layer on his body. And also because I'm using a different color of ink as my base color, it's going to make it look a little bit different yet, but everything is going to look really cohesive in the end. Okay, so I'm bringing in this YG97. It looked like my uh, marker was going to start leaking on me there, so I pulled off the cap on the other end to hopefully divert any disasters. Fortunately, I didn't have any. I do have that other turtle over there that I haven't worked on yet, so I could have just started over, but I was really happy that I didn't have to. So after I was done with that YG97, I'm bringing in that YG95. I'm going to blend that out, and I'm going to bring in that YG93. I am still making sure that I don't cover up any of that field greens. We really need that ink to work for us and there's no reason to cover it all up. I'm also just focusing around the edge of this guy's shell. I, there's those three uh, plates that run up right up the center of the shell. I'm not, not coloring those in at all. I'm just going to leave those strictly in the field greens ink. Plus I have something else that I'm going to be doing here in just a moment and that'll kind of help kick it up, up a notch as well. The other thing that, that I didn't show you is when I stamped the second layer of this turtle, I stamped his shell. I showed you that. I also came in and stamped the second layer on his head, his arms, and his legs. And I'm going to do the same thing here on this third layer. I just don't show it to you because it's the same thing. You just need to make sure that you've got it lined up, stamp it, 
and you're off and running. So on the third layer, I'm going to be using Hero Arts Forever Green ink again. I'm going to be double stamping this. I want to make sure that it's nice and solid, that it's going to stand out really well. Forever Green is probably one of my favorite Hero Green colors. I think it's just a nice, gorgeous, deep color. So after I have all that stamped, I'm not doing any more Copic coloring on my sea turtle. I'm putting that off to the side and I'm going to work on, come back to my background here and work on this. I, this is sat here and dried for a little bit. This actually works really well if you do this right away while the ink is still kind of damp, but it'll still work even after it's dry. So I have some of the seaweed from the stamp set on an acrylic block, and I'm stamping this in a Versamark uh, clear sticky ink, and I'm just stamping it directly on there. I did have the bottom of that mast off, and I'm just going to let the reaction, let that Versamark ink react with that distress ink, and as it dries back, they're going and get just a little bit darker. You can see that right there. It looks like I brought in another ink to do that with. Another colored ink? Totally didn't. That's what happens with Versamark ink. Should you use Hero Arts inks with these? I definitely suggest that you do it right away while that ink is still kind of on the damp side. It will dry back and you'll be able to see the variations in those colors. It's a pretty, pretty cool technique. All right, so I want to add a drop shadow to my turtle here. I have fussy cut him out. I did not want a white outline. You could use the dye if you didn't want to take the time and fussy cut this out. I think it looks better without it. So I took the time to do that, but I want to give him a drop shadow because I need to make him look like he's popping a little bit. Now I am going to put some foam tape behind him so he literally pops up off the panel, but I really want to play that up with a drop shadow. So I have him placed on my panel where I want him and I'm just coming in here with a light pencil. It looks kind of dark on screen here, but it, I did actually keep it pretty light. Although by the time I'm done with the drop shadow, you're not even going to be able to tell that I used a pencil, but I wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to be noticeable no matter, no matter what. So to do my drop shadow, I'm coming in with a C3 and I'm kind of going with my light source as if it's in the top right. However, it's not that I really care about the light source. I simply chose this because my turtle moves off to the top left. So you can see I have him there diagonally at the top left. So in order to really capitalize on that shadow, I'm putting it as if the light is coming from the top right. Plus, I don't need to put an entire a shadow in completely around him. That's he, he's not going to really stand out that way. After I came in with that C3, I'm coming in with a C1 and I'm blending that out. I actually got ahead of myself down there by his left, or I'm sorry, his right foot with that C3. So I just keep coming back in with my colorless blender and kind of working that out. It does help a bunch if your colorless blender is uh, nice and juicy, folks. If it's on the dry side, you're going to have a heck of a time working that out. So I did make sure that my uh, colorless blender was refilled. After I blended that out with the C1, I'm coming in with the C00 and I'm blending that out a little bit more. Now, I'm one of those folks where I don't like a harsh line on my drop shadow. If you don't mind it, you could absolutely leave it as it is right now. I like to have a little bit more of a diffused shadow. So I'm going to bring in my colorless blender and I'm going to work that out a little bit because I did just refill it. It actually doesn't take a whole lot to kind of get that to smooth back and kind of diffuse a little bit. But again, you could totally leave it if you don't mind it. I also made sure I added that drop shadow in all of that ink blending that I did. It, it doesn't hurt your Copics at all. And it kind of helps finish it off, make everything look like it's working together. So I did make sure that I added that in there. I did have to go a little bit heavier within the ink blending as opposed to what I had done on it, the white paper itself, but that's totally fine. It's definitely worth it in, in the end because look at that. He literally, if I just mounted it on there right now with no phone tape, he would look like he's popping off the page. Now, I didn't record stamping this uh, sentiment on here. I did use VersaFine Onyx Black ink and Hero Arts Clear Embossing Powder and just simply stamped it on there, heat embossed it, and called it a day. I love a simple sentiment if I'm going to put a sentiment on there. I used the 3M foam tape to pop this guy up. I'd actually ended up cutting out, fussy cutting out that itsy bitsy, itsy bitsy little hibiscus uh, because I couldn't cut out the stamen on it. 
I just glued the hibiscus flower itself on there, took a black pin and kind of drew the stamen on his shell. So it's sitting right on top of on on top of his shell, but it looks like it's a part of the flower. Now I'm bringing in a Secura clear glaze pin and I'm just going over those uh, little dots. Now this would have been from the third layer, what I had stamped in the forever green. And those are the only ones I'm doing. These will make them look a little bit darker. They'll stand out a little bit more. And I also did that third layer on that shelf with that glaze pin. It's a little bit of work folks, but I think that it's totally worth it in the end. All right, folks, that is it. We are done. We are good to go. Do be sure to play along in the A Blog Name Hero Monochromatic Challenge. We love to see what you guys come up with. I have more details and links down in the description below, as well as over on my blog. I hope you enjoyed my project today. If you did, hit that like button and share it with your friends. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and tap that bell next to the subscribe button so you can receive all future notifications. Thanks again so much for stopping by. Until next time.